So anti-apartheid activist Matthew Goniwa's legacy was honored this past Friday. Now, the community leader and teacher, who's known as one of the Craddock Four, was murdered by the apartheid security forces back in June in the 1980s. The Housing Education Department hosted a memorial lecture in his honor, where the official launch of the Matthew Goniwa Scholarship Fund was also rolled out. This event was followed by the 21st Annual Teachers Awards. To tell us a bit more about what we should make of these initiatives and perhaps what they mean for Goniwa's relatives, let's speak to the Matthew Goniwa uh, Foundation CEO, Advocate uh, Tulani Makubela, who joins us now via our video link. And Advocate, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Let me begin by just gauging from you how effective you think initiatives like these are in keeping the legacies of the figures who are involved alive. Well, I think the most important thing for anybody to remember and to realize is that uh, history is very important. Uh, a nation that doesn't know and understand its history is bound to either repeat the mistakes that history has taught them or to forget the, gain, the gains that they've made uh, that have been recorded through history. So I am actually the CEO of an institution called Matthew Cornelia School of Leadership and Governance, which is an institution uh, wholly owned by the Department of Education uh, in the Gauteng province. Uh, you are correct, we hosted a memorial lecture uh, on Friday, and the memorial lecture really has got two most important rationales behind it. The first one was to profile the, 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 the institution and the work that we do, but most importantly is to keep the legacy of Matthew Koniwe as an icon, as a, a struggle icon, as a hero in this country alive, and I think we have achieved that. Yeah. And what sense are you getting about how easy it is to do that? I mean, you know, we live in a country perhaps where it feels in some respects that mostly young people who are, I guess, who are busy trying to make it through the day don't find sometimes an opportunity to also look behind about how far we've come. So with that in mind, are you finding that it's becoming harder to remind people where we come from and why individuals like Matthew Goniwe matter in that context? I, I think it is a bit hard, and, and I'll tell you why I think so. Uh, I think there is a sense amongst young people that, yes, things did happen in the past, but perhaps we should go beyond them and focus on the future and not dwell on them a lot because they, they really happened and it is what it is. And I think that's a big mistake. So it is important for any institution, any foundation, and uh, anybody uh, for that matter, to actually keep reminding the youth, keep reminding everybody in the country that these, these events were very seminal in our history. Mm -hmm. They were very seminal in, the, in, the, in, 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 in what is currently happening uh, and where we're finding ourselves as a country. So we, we can only do so much uh, and we can only hope that uh, these kind of things are even taught at school so that the youth do not actually forget and are reminded of what, what this country went through. The, the likes of Matthew Konu and the comrades that he was killed with uh, in Craddock uh, laid down their lives basically for this country. And if we were to forget that and think, well, it is something that happened in the past and should be forgotten, I think we'll be doing a grave mistake. Yeah. A lot of conversation in the wake of the passing of F.W. de Klerk around justice. Um, justice for the Craddock Four, justice for the families that are left behind. How should we craft those conversations now? given how much time has lapsed and realistically, what can still be done insofar as justice is concerned? Well, I think the first thing that we need to remember is we need to put first the families of those people that were actually killed uh, by apartheid. Those families still, most of them in fact, uh, still have not received justice. They still do not know who in fact killed uh, their loved one. I'll give you an example, uh, Mrs. Goni, Wenyameka Goni, who just passed away, I think, uh, uh, a couple of months ago, who is the wife of uh, Matthew Goni, uh, basically passed away without knowing who actually killed her husband. Mm. And that's, it. that's a serious tragic, tragedy. So even though these things happened in the past, it is important that we actually talk about them and we actually bring those that have to be brought to book, uh, to, book to account for these things. So. In the wake of what has happened uh, and the passing on of, of, of passing on of Mr. De Klerk or President De Klerk, I think uh, these conversations have become even more critical to be had. 
because the, the, the sense that the families are left with is that, well, uh, uh, the government doesn't care about what has happened. Uh, the government is basically just pushing this aside and it doesn't do anything about it. People are dying that should be held accountable and they, they're not even telling us the truth. They, are not even, they haven't even been given an opportunity or been, been held accountable uh, so that we know what has happened to, to, to our loved ones. I mean, to this day, nobody knows who killed the, the crowd of four. We do have uh, some testimony that was uh, delivered uh, in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Yeah. But that's just it. Other than that, there are meetings that Mr. Duclerc is said to have been a part of uh, and could have shed some light on what exactly happened and who actually executed uh, the plan and, and basically killed those four comrades. Sobering reflections in a context where the country is still grappling with its own history. Thank you for making time to break it all down for us. Really do appreciate it. That there is Advocate Tulani Makubela, who is the CEO of the Matthew Cornelius School of Leadership and Governance Foundation. Once again, thanks very much indeed.